Today is going to be a busy but hopefully very enjoyable day for me. I am starting with this, a 2000 TVR Griffith 500. I suppose I should put this in my Porsche Boxster Alternatives playlist and you, you don't really get that much more alternative than this. I've driven quite a few TVRs both on and off the channel but it's been a long time since I've got behind the wheel of what I term a classic. I suppose you could put the Cerber in that same category but for me it goes along with the T cars, the Tuscan T350, Tamora and confusingly the Cigaris. This though is from a very different era and in truth it's this car I think which gave TVR its popularity. So where I am now I can see absolutely why. Once upon a time I went to a, a local specialist, Carriages, and tried both a Tuscan and a Griffith that they had in stock. They were at the same price, about £17,000, and I wanted to see which one suited me more. As it happened, I came out thinking that the Tuscan was definitely the car for me, and I just didn't really like the way that the Griff felt. It seemed a little bit more old-fashioned. The Tuscan was racier, sportier, more modern feeling, more exciting. However, as time has gone on, the appeal of a car like this, something a little bit more softer, rounded, lazier, has become stronger and stronger, to the extent that I do often find myself in the classifieds looking at Chimeras. Now, the Chimera is more or less the Griffith's sister car. I never quite understood what the actual difference was. Yes, I know they don't look the same or any of that jazz, but I'm hoping maybe a TVR expert in the comments can tell me what's actually different between them. Historically, the Chimera was always a, a little bit cheaper, certainly when I was looking at them, but I don't know if that was even the case when the cars were new. I know the Griffith was seen as the flagship, and indeed, they didn't make anywhere near as many of these as I thought they did. Less than two and a half thousand of them. Now this one is a Griff 500, which is the one people always want, and it's powered by a 5-litre evolution of the famous Rover engine, which can trace its roots all the way back to the 1960s, maybe even 50s. I think it was a Buick lump, wasn't it? I'm sure everybody knows, and I've just forgotten. It was an American lump brought over, and you know what? It's a really good engine for companies like TVR. Although I can't help but wonder if it, it kind of hampered them because they designed so many cars around this engine. When it came to replacing it, they were a little bit stuck because one of the best things about the old Rover V8 is how small it is. It's absolutely tiny engine. There were, I believe, about five different variations of this engine you could have if you were buying yourself a TVR at the time. There was the 4-litre, the 4-litre high compression, the 4.3, 4.5 and the 500. The owner tells me he was sold this car as having power steering, but I'm not entirely convinced. <laughs> it's lovely, this. The engine doesn't really have that much interest in revving, but that's okay. Responds beautifully, plenty of torque from low down. I think that 340 horsepower figure might be a touch optimistic. This is a later car which has a catalytic converter in it and I think when they fitted those the cars did lose quite a bit of grunt. Very popular modification is to decat these and often it's not even for reasons of power. TVR owners are more interested in noise and the fact that without the cat they do run quite a bit cooler. Apparently on long journeys the gear lever can get roasting hot because of all the exhaust and cat and everything that's, that's down here. When I was doing my research for this car, and I always try and do the minimum amount of research that I can get away with, the most surprising numbers I could find were those relating to the car's dimensions. Now we all know that TVRs are fairly light because there isn't really anything to them. They are a steel tubular chassis underneath with a fiberglass body on top. Yeah, that's so much fun! 
Anyway, this car weighs only about 20 kilos more than the MX-5 that I drove a few weeks ago, the 30th anniversary ND. That's ludicrously light. This particular car, barring a, a sleeved exhaust, is more or less standard too. And you know what? I'm not sure I'd change a thing on this. It's not the most refined of suspension, but it's not crashy, it's not punishing. It, it tempers your speed, and you know what? It's just the kind of car you want to just enjoy, have the wind in your hair, give it that little prod every now and again, enjoy that noise. As TVRs go, this is actually not too noisy either. I'm so thankful for that because I want one of my sort of lesser used test routes today, and so I, I don't really like being that guy that wakes up the entire neighborhood. It's only nine o'clock on a Saturday morning, and I'm out filming. I'm not complaining, <laughs> oh no. Now, if you do want to put this car into reverse, which I'm going to now, sorry to these people, you have to put it into fifth first, then reverse, and then it won't crunch. Most remarkable bit about this car, when I was researching it, not only are they super light, but that we all knew already, they're tiny. What do I mean by tiny? Well, this car is in all dimensions smaller than that MX-5. Yep, it's shorter, has a shorter wheelbase, it's narrower, and it's lower. It's microscopic, which is absolutely brilliant because it means that if you are enjoying this car somewhere like Britain, which is where I suspect the majority of them are, you can enjoy it on pretty much every road that you find. There are quite a few cars that I know which would be yeah, a bit nerve wracking to drive down here. I test drove the DBS, the new DBS, down here, and it was it was daunting, to say the least. This, no trouble at all. Means if you do get camera cars, the Audi TT drivers coming at you on the wrong side of the road, you can simply just dart around them and everything is absolutely fine. Just as well too, because if you have an accident in one of these, you will die. Just steering, by the way, absolutely delicious. Brake feel is magnificent. Oh, yes. This is just a car from a different time, and it is absolutely wondrous. I am having so much fun here. This is way better than I remember it being. Gearbox, very firm, very heavy, but extremely accurate. Again, another thing you wouldn't expect with a TBR, stuff like that to be good, but actually it's brilliant. This car really gives you absolutely all the information you need to make the right decision about what's going on. Our stories will abound about people who were just, you know, being perfectly sensible, driving along in their Griffith, minding their own business, and then all of a sudden they were dead. Well, yeah, okay, if it's absolutely pouring with rain and you're on ancient tires, that may well be the case. But this, this car feels actually, and I can't believe I'm using this word, quite docile. It's very friendly. Maybe the ravages of time have sort of tempered the performance on offer. That, and I'm, I'm quite convinced, 340 horsepower. You sure, TVR? The rev counter is just wobbling all over the place, not really doing anything. That's so satisfying. So, so satisfying. doesn't crack and pop and make hideous amounts of noise like many other TBRs I've driven do. The fact is, they're not actually that noisy out of the factory gates, it's just that nearly none of them stayed standard for that long, which is how I think TBR's got its reputation as being just these sort of, you know, noisy yobmobiles. So the Griffith really could have been the car that launched TBR into superstardom. But as the story goes, when they were building just a few cars a week, it was fine because, you know, being handmade cars, they had issues, but they also had time to solve them. 
They then got popular, which is about the worst thing that could happen to the company because they started building a lot more cars with the same number of people and the same amount of time. And that meant that it wasn't really the time to do the quality control checks these cars desperately needed. And as a result, they started going wrong. TBR also made the absolutely baffling decision then to try and build not just one, but two of their own engines, completely unrelated ones too, the V8, the AJP8, and the uh, Speed 6. I expect their hand was forced because this rover lump was not going to go on forever, but even still, surely it would make sense just to buy one in. I don't know what they were thinking. Steering is absolutely brilliant in this car you feel everything moves around quite nicely because the car's so compact you really use quite a bit of the road choose your line these cars even have masses of space in them okay this roof which is carbon fiber by the way does come off and take up most of the boot but uh, there's actually a lot of room back there which is great because it means they're good for touring and tvr owners love road trips seriously they're nutters This is sensational, and here's the best bit, right? Tuscans, seven or eight years ago, similar money to these, sort of about 20 grand or so, get you a nice one. Now, they've nearly doubled in price in some cases. These, I was shocked to see, haven't really gone up by anywhere near as much. In fact, 25,000 pounds will get you into what appears to be a pretty decent Griffith. And if you're not a fan of the looks, as I, I will confess, I'm not, you can get into a Chimera. It's basically the same thing anyway. Do make sure you buy either from a reputable specialist or get it looked over because they do rust. The chassis weren't really that well treated from factory and because they are fiberglass bodies, they do hide their issues quite well. <laughs> Tell you something though, this is absolutely brilliant car. Way better than I remember it. Is a Boxster going to be quicker? Yes. Is a Boxster better put together? Yes. Would a Boxster be putting this smile on my face? I'm not sure it would. Huge thank you to Nick, the owner, for bringing his car out early on a Saturday morning. Thanks to you for watching. If you have a car you want to see on the channel, do drop me an email. Details are in the description box down below. Please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.